three incredibly talented Nashville songwriters team up for our incredibly talented band, Nash Villains. Join us on the Music Universe podcast. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm doing well, man. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you for the heart attack. <laughs> what? What heart attack? Okay. So in my room getting dressed getting ready you know this this setup here takes i'm jealous of you because you get to sit down in front of your computer you have the zoom background i have a camera a tv behind me i i, <laughs> I have lights to turn on i have to do everything but offer a human sacrifice in order to get this thing up and running and it takes it, it <laughs> takes about five minutes once i'm in full garb to come in turn all the lights on turn on the tv uh, cue up the camera, whatever. And I get a text there early and I'm in, I'm in the, I'm across the hall getting dressed. I'm like, okay, well, I'll be ready in about five minutes. Well, I'm looking for my shoes, looking for my shoes, looking for my shoes. Would you know one was in the living room, which was now I kicked, this is a glitch in the matrix situation. I kicked my shoes off last night in, uh, in a chair, in the chair, watching TV. Somehow, one was in the living room. The other ended up under my bed in the other room. It happens. I don't have a pet. Well, my best friend stays here sometimes and he's kind of, I, I think my best friend is to blame for this. So, uh, but he claims he is not. However, <laughs> I, I guess you're hearing about it. just teasing him and he knows this because i have no clue how it happened but watch tv and one gets kicked under my bed anyway well, so tell I'm me scrambling i am scrambling to find everything i did this shoe list which i don't like to do because my feet don't touch the floor when i'm in here so i have a rail i put them on mm. anyway it was crazy getting ready for this I was about to ask why you needed your shoes when you're just down the hall in the same uh, apartment. Because I, like I said, I, yeah. I'm in a, I'm in a bar stool that my feet can't touch the, like right now my feet are touching the floor. I can't, I'm short, not as short as you, but I'm short. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, you know, this was, uh, this was fun. You know, we, we had all three of them with us. So, you know, we'll, uh, their uh, names are Brett Boyett, Troy, Johnson and Scott Lindsay. I have to make sure I read the names properly because their name is Nash Villains, not Nash Villians, which living in Nashville for two years, I heard that all the time. And you have yep. to read the text carefully. So I want to make sure I didn't butcher their name. So they, they've written all kinds of songs you've heard on the radio. I mean, if you've heard songs from the Chicks, Keith Urban, Lauren Elena, Cassidy Pope, and even James Taylor. They've written collectively, not not together, but collectively they've written separately, songs for and them. then they came together as a group. Yeah, right. And their new single, it's called "Who Don't." It's got a completely different vibe than the mainstream songs, so you're gonna have to definitely check that out uh, for those who haven't yet. And uh, it's been a whirlwind of a year to uh, launch your career, launch your band. And, uh, yeah, Nash Villains joining us on the Music Universe podcast. How are y'all doing? Good. Doing great, doing How great. Doing? How you doing, buddy? Uh, not too bad. Uh, I know you guys are probably in Nashville, which is where the name obviously comes from. Some big name songwriters, and uh, you guys teamed up as a trio now. You're doing uh, some, uh, sounds like some good country pop uh, music going on. Why don't you guys uh, introduce yourselves for those who are unfamiliar with your faces and uh, tell us uh, how the band came about. Well, I'm Troy. Uh, this is Brett, and this is Scott. And I'll let uh, Brett and Scott field that question. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, which part he wants to start with? Well, he's wanted to know how the band how, came, how we came together. together. Oh, okay. Uh, well, the band started, uh, I was in Los Angeles and I was working on a movie called Forever My Girl. And uh, Scott came out to write with me through a friend of, a mutual friend of ours named Tim Gates from the band Due West. And go ahead, Scott. Well, um, uh... I was out there doing a uh, songwriters festival. Durango, right? Called Durango, yeah, Durango Songwriters Festival. Tim had, Tim had a writing poem that said it with with Brett, writing for a movie called Forever My Girl. 
which Brett was the musical director on, right? <clears throat> music super. Well, Supervised. yeah, he's an Supervised. executive music producer. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah get the uh, title right. Yeah, that, that, I wasn't sure <laughs> about that. Who knows what that even means? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It means yeah. all encompassing. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, was, the he was the man. Yeah, yeah. He was the man. Anyway, we. So Tim invited me to go write, and I was sure, why not? So we go down and, and we write. And as I've said before, of course, the song didn't it didn't make the movie, but me and Brett really hit it off while we were writing. And uh, he said that he during the course of our writing appointment, uh, he said he was moving to Nashville and he really wanted to put a band together. So we get to talking about that. And in the interim, I had been doing demos for the soundtrack for Universal. And I'd been using this guy's voice, who I'd never met him in person. But I had been using him through a mutual friend uh, to sing the demos for the for the country stars when I was putting. Them and you on still haven't figured out who that mutual yeah. friend is. I haven't, man. Yeah. And they're, they're gonna be, you know, they're, they're, they're listening yeah. listen to these things going, "Come on, yeah, right. Yeah. Hello, right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> but he was he was playing those songs for me, and I'm like, <clears throat> I listened. It's like the third one. And I was like, Is that Troy Johnson singing that? Yeah. He said, Yeah. When I come to Nashville, I I want this guy to be the singer of my band. I was like, well, heck, me and Troy write for the same publishing company. His office is across the hall from mine. Hell, I'll call him right now. We'll put, you know, see if he's interested. So I called him up. He said, yeah, sure. We'll check it out. We'll check it out. We'll check well, it know, out. The, the yeah. genesis. Well, that's how a cold call usually yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Let's <laughs> talk. Well, the genesis oh, yeah. of this band was not just a regular country band. It was, you know... I had the, the title Nash Villains and basically the, the name Nash Villains. And I was like, man, I, I just want to do a dark outlaw country thing. Cause I love that stuff. And I grew up on country and we all grew up on country, but that that's just, I just always love the outlaws, the highwaymen, you know, w- Waylon, Willie, Johnny Cash, uh, Chris Ledoux, um, you know, just Chris Christopherson, obviously uh, just all, all of, Nashville. You can tell um, we're on Music Row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're downtown. It's a constant thing. But that that was more the thing. And you know, and Troy has a very distinctive voice, a very dark and resonant voice. I was like, man, that's just such a cool sound for this. This it just fit to me in my mind with the name. So yeah. and then well, well we so uh well they came and talked to me. Uh they we we you know met at my office uh here on the row and actual act in this actual mm-hmm uh office here and uh, we uh decided to just you know first thing we got to do is well let's see if we can even write a song together so we got together several times wrote several songs and uh brett uh took them and and did some uh some production on them did some uh some preliminary pre-production and uh, what we got back after he finished was you know really astounding we we kind of heard it right, you know, after that. Not that we didn't think that what we wrote was good, but you know, you never know uh, mm-hmm. when the when you know when the rubber hits the road in the studio. So, uh, you know, from there we took those tracks and and uh, hired a, a studio band and to fill in some of the blanks. And and uh, as as Brett kept working on it, uh, you know, people would pop their head into mm-hmm. his studio over at um, Station West. Actually, as Brett kept working on it, Troy more and more decided, well, maybe okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was being sold on it more and now, more. Now, yeah, now, yeah. Now, now you can use my picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> I do. But uh, so anyway, it started becoming more and more viable. You know, people started getting interested in it and we started getting a bit of a buzz around town. And, and so we decided to to, you know, maybe uh, not just focus on sync stuff or not just focus on cinematic material, but but actually go for a more traditional uh, way of, uh, you know, the path of a band. So, uh, you know, for the last year or so, we've we've, um, you know, tried to release singles and and uh, uh, well, we you know, we have released singles. That's that's not really a hard thing to do, but whether or not people like it is, is another issue. Yeah. But uh, we've uh, we've oh, had some is, success so it, far. It is harder to do when you're trying to do something different, not so straight up the middle mainstream. Right. So I mean, we're definitely taking a big risk from what we normally do. Right. Uh, all three of us are. So. Right. So for the last year and a half or so, we we've, we've worked as a as a cohesive band and and you know uh, tried to walk the path of a traditional band where 
We're going to play live. We're going to do videos. We're going to do all that kind of stuff. And then COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. There, yeah, yeah. 2020 with the, the asterisk year. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's like, hey, guys, we're going to get out and start promoting our record. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Now we're going to concentrate on social media yeah, stuff. We're going to learn how to do TikTok. Yeah, we're going to learn how to do TikTok, <laughs> which that's still a work in yeah, progress. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of that platform myself. Yeah. I, there's just too many out there personally, but you guys, um, you know, to let people know if they don't, you guys have written collectively songs for The Chicks, Keith Urban, Cassidy Pope, James Taylor, Lauren, Elena, and more. How do those songs differ from your own that you're actually uh, recording yourselves? They're more up the alley of those artists. Uh, that's how I would say it. And they're, I would say initially they're, they're more of what you would expect uh, a, con a country, uh, contemporary country terrestrial radio song to sound like. <laughs> <laughs> that's a mouthful. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> but long, long story we, we short, are not there. Yeah, they, not there. they differ not. quite a bit. They yeah. differ quite a bit. Uh, they're, the, they're all amazing. Yeah, yeah. The, stuff that, the stuff that we do as a band is, 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 is rather unique. Uh, 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 you know, in conjunction with, uh, in relation to, you know, what's going on in, in, uh, in modern country radio right now. So we're hoping to capture a niche audience that will grow and grow and grow and grow. Yeah. I think, and we love writing that stuff. We and we still write that stuff. All three of us write that yeah. stuff. Oh, that's, the commercial stuff. Yeah, sure, we, we all got to. write that because that's part of our yeah, it's part of our jobs. Um, but this was definitely. Uh, if we we kind of all decide if we're going to do this, this is going to be different, and we're going to do something that either people love and shakes things up, or they're just they dismiss it and they're like, hey, what is this crap?" What well, Alan is, you know, mm -hmm. it, honestly, it's it's a side project that we're hoping to become a main project. That's what we're hoping <laughs> to. Do. That's what we're hoping. I guess to do. What's one of us you're talking? To. <laughs> <laughs> now I've I've heard the new single and uh, it's definitely unique and I I enjoy it. I'm not one on modern uh, technology taking over music, so to speak. But uh, what you guys are doing, it's definitely in the realm of what I, I enjoy. Something, like you said, unique. And it's definitely not in that mainstream category. Um, so I, I say keep going. But why don't you tell people about the new track? Yeah, I mean, this, this, uh, this new track is actually the one song on the album we did not write. Uh, it's, a, it's a song by Andrew Dorff, who's a and uh, Brad Tercy and Corey Crowder, who are all three heavy hitting songwriters in town. Um, they're all amazing. And uh, Andrew was the connection to us mm -hmm. uh, through his dad, Steve, who I used to work with TV and, and film with. And Andrew, unfortunately, passed away in 2016. Is that right? Mm -hmm. 2016. <clears throat> and uh, this is one of the last songs. The one I think it's one of the the last group of songs that he wrote and steve uh had uh i was meeting with steve and i uh, played him nash villains he's like oh man you got i've got this this song i've been, I've been saving these songs these, these last you know there's like five songs that i just i've been saving for the right artists to come around around and he, he's all about marrying the right artists you know with the right song mm -hmm. uh and that's, you know, that's where the magic is. And he's right about that. Well, the fact that he loved the project so much, I think is, uh, you know, it's a feather in our cap because yeah, he's a you know, yeah. great endorsement yeah. and, and he's been holding on to these songs apparently. And, and yeah. he saw an opportunity to, you know, uh, to further his son's memory yeah. and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so and obviously it was a real honor to, to be approached by him for sure. Yeah. And it mm -hmm. meant a lot to him to obviously like what Troy just said to, to, <laughs> to, you know, to have us record one of Andrew's songs and then a lot to us. Yeah. Way, you know, ton to us. To, to yeah, it was an honor it. to work with him and, yeah. know, and not call him a friend. Yeah. yeah. And then this was the, also the only song that we didn't produce. Mm. So, try, yeah. so Steve produced it. He's like, you know, it's my son's song. Are you guys cool with me producing? We're like, well, yeah. I mean, Steve's a Hall of Fame songwriter in his own right. Yeah. We kind of let him go. And yeah. So he just, he did it. And this, this is, that's his production. It's, it's us on the record, but it's, it's his production. Mm. Yeah. Love that. Love that story. That, that seems to be the, uh, the genesis of Nashville is that it's a family affair. People, it's really rooted in those connections and in those relationships. And I think that's why country music is the most authentic music genre that there is, because it's all about the connection. Yeah, I think we're really lucky in that regard. I mean, it's a southern town and, 
and, and, you know, the uh, Southern hospitality reigns supreme. And, and, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and I just don't see when it comes to the songwriting community, it's a family and, and everybody roots for everybody else. And it's not to say that there's not competition. It's not to say that, you know, there are, it's a, it's a friendly competition. It's a friendly competition. I mean, it's, yeah. there's not a lot of backbiting, I mean, really. I've not seen, yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, uh, maybe at the, at the levels I've not achieved yet, there might be, but, you know, I mean, there, but, you know, within the songwriting community proper, you know, it's, it, everybody loves well, everybody. Instead of and, us being competitive to write the song, we're actually, we're actually honored to do the song. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Writer, yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, yeah, that, that's definitely the Nashville community for sure. Yeah. As a whole. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, when I, I lived there from uh, 06 to 08, it's getting a little too old for me to remember exact dates now, it seems, but uh, it was <laughs> all about uh, all about just staying uh, humble, then you're going to go somewhere because your connections are going to continue to grow. But if right. you're arrogant or whatever, it's it's kind of like, don't even bother with me. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And there's definitely a thing with getting the Nashville community behind you. Um, and that's, you know, for sure. Yeah, there's definitely that's definitely a key element to success. I, I agree with you. Yeah, that. arrogance will get you noticed. But, you know, if you <laughs> if you keep it too long, you know, you're going to get you're going to knock down for sure. Yeah. Right. Right. So you guys are uh, you just released a new single uh, is an album coming. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we the way that the, the music industry works now, uh, you know, you you release singles and then, you know, at the end of that, that run, you, you, you package all those together in an album. So I think we're looking at the end, by the end of the year, by the fall, we'll yeah. have something to uh, release as a cohesive unit because about, we have, we have, I mean, there's so much I can't wait to release. Yeah. You know? well, there, there's about, I think we're going to have like six or seven singles. So it'll be more of an EP uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, no, it's going to be full album, but we have six album. or seven to, to push the album. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So that uh, Brett's the business mind in the band, so yeah. we kind of look to him to, you know, for release dates I, and what comes next. I just, and... just figure it'd be out just in time for Christmas list, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, are you guys, uh, you know, with things opening back up? Or is, is there a tour possibly in the works? There's conversations. We're yeah. working on that. Yeah. Uh, I think the you know the issue we we're having right now is we have to get an opening slot uh, with, with an, uh, an act that's already out there, a bigger act, yeah. because the, all the booking agents who we've talked to, we just got off the phone with two different booking agents, actually. And a lot of them are, they're, they're, they're doing deals with the bigger acts right now because the bigger acts have been sitting on their asses for the last year. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and it's really yeah. expensive to tour, so it has yeah. to make sense. Well, yeah. and the bigger acts make them more money. Let's right. be honest. So, right. so it's... Right. Right now, it's about, and I would do the same thing if I was a booking agent. I'd be getting out all my big acts right. that have been sitting around for the last year. But what I do think, right? But what I do think the pandemic has done is is shown the viability of of online performance, yeah. and of course, it, it's allowed the the audience worldwide to sort of accept the 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 idea, the possible limitations, the you know it it it's really opened up a whole new uh, avenue stream uh, or revenue stream for, for the musician, because uh, you know, it's, it's now a little bit more accepted that, okay, they're going to be playing online. Well, let's check it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and whereas before it was like, really, I don't want to yeah. sit there online, but it's, I think there's a, there's a paradigm shift that's, that's really beneficial in the long run so that, you can take advantage of both live and online. I think it's happening more now for sure. I mean, there's definitely, a, we're, we're definitely doing a lot of that now. Yeah. I and mean, we're performing probably once a week at least. On yeah. And it's a whole lot of fun. The only it's, thing we miss is that crowd the response. The, the, sure. The, I just missed the crowd. For all, the, the, only, the only thing that happens <laughs> after we finish our song is I'll get in the mic and go. <sighs> <laughs> I think we're going to get some cardboard cutouts. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, we're going to have to get like the buttons. NBA teams, you know, put, put them in yeah, the stands. Yeah, and, we're going to have totally. to get some buttons that, that make the crowd noise. <laughs> Can, <laughs> some canned applause. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> we can borrow from the NBA. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, see if they got any of you guys can 
take out. I know that uh, Lindsay L did one not too long ago, and she actually had like a virtual crowd that she could interact with. So they're getting. Oh, very, that's good. Uh, we'll have to check that out. Yeah, see if we can yeah. implement that. Interesting, yeah. yeah, they're getting very uh, unique with that kind of stuff. And I think they've had to, like you said. And I, I, I yeah. know I saw somewhere in a release that just came out that some of the shows might be live streamed on some of these tours. So um, I think that is uh, very beneficial. So if, I guess if the pandemic gave us anything, it gave us more opportunities for music. And to yeah, make money. Yeah. I'm not sure it's a good thing. Everything's going to where you don't have to leave your place. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, so now you, you shop from home. Right. You do yeah. From home, you order food. Right. You know, all this kind of yeah. stuff. Now we can sit here in our chairs and grab our guitars and perform without going anywhere, moving in, without any, moving yeah. any gear. You know what? I don't <laughs> want to derail, derail the conversation, but when I was in college, that we had a we had a a big assembly and we had a speaker that that talked about this very thing back in the early 90s, say there's going to be a trend. And she, what she called it was cocooning. And that's exactly what you're talking yeah. about. You know, 20 years ago, she was like, this is going to be a thing yeah. where people are just going to stay there. And and what's funny is you see that movie Wally that, uh, yeah. that where everybody's <laughs> really obese. And yeah. so that's, <laughs> that's a, you gotta, yeah, you got to make sure that you don't fall on that, uh, yeah. that yeah. paradigm. But uh, yeah. anyway. Nonetheless, gentlemen, I got to tell you, this was a treat. We uh, we've really, really enjoyed talking to you. It was kind of funny. The point you made was the perfect point to wrap up on. Uh, we hope you have the most success as entertainers. Your music is, you know, loved by millions. Uh, and now your work as a band, uh, I'm sure will be as well. And I think 2021, you guys are going to build on that success uh, that got kind of stalled in that asterisk year and i think this right. new single is the is the way to do it thank you so much for spending a little of your afternoon with us we really appreciate it thanks for having us thank you guys thank you matt man from your lips to god's ears that, that that's wonderful thank you well before we get out of here as you guys are heading out why don't you tell everybody where they can uh hear the new music and uh, follow you guys on socials sure uh, i would say number one go to, to our website nashvillensband.com you can find all of our socials on there but you can also stream us on spotify apple music Amazon Music, uh, all the, the streaming platforms. Um, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, I mean, and there's, what else? Oh, there's Instagram, Facebook, all the usuals. But all those links are on the website. So nashvillainsband.com is where you need to go to for yeah. the hub. Yeah. <clears throat> but otherwise, if you go to, if you want to just go to Facebook, look for facebook.com slash nashvillainsband or, or Instagram's nashvillainsband. So. There, there's a lot of stuff that you can that you can watch on YouTube and everything too. We we do uh, what we call happy hour where we interview other artists and we have the uh, broke down sessions where we perform with other artists like Bell, uh, uh, no, not the Bell and Bros. That was uh, that was the interview, but uh, like uh, Richard Young from the Kentucky Headhunters and Leslie Satcher, on and on Steve and on. Dorf. You know, and Steve Dorf. There's a lot a lot of performances and things on YouTube, and they, they might be posted on the other <laughs> socials also. So there's a lot of things to see. And here out there. Yeah. And the best way to our, our handle is generally Nash Villains Band. N-A-S-H-V-A-I. No. A-I. N- yeah, but I think I forgot the L's. C-I-L-A-I-L. Yeah. Thank you. Nash Villains. Yeah. Yeah. Nash, not Nash. Nash in front of villains and you got it. Band. That's great. Yeah, check out our new single, Who Don't, and check out our new video for Who Don't. What a fantastic interview. Uh just really cool. Getting, around, getting to sit around and chat with those guys. It was really, really fun. Uh, lots of laughs, like a big virtual party. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you heard towards the end of it, uh, the, their feet cut out a little bit, but we made the most of it. And uh, hey, a little Big Town put it best, day drinking. I mean, it was, you know, mid-afternoon in Nashville when we filmed this and they're already getting started. So I, I like their <laughs> style. I love it. I like their style. I can't wait to see more from them. For the Music Universe podcast, I'm Matt. And um, buddy, thanks for listening or watching on socials. Keep checking us out at themusicuniverse.com for the latest news, reviews, and release info. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. Take care.